Wow, Dragon's Dogma 2. After over a decade of waiting, this flawed masterpiece finally has a sequel. I can't wait to create my character, choose my class, and set off on my- SOMEBODY HELP ME! SOMEBODY HELP ME PLEASE! SAMANTHA! SAMANTHA! GET IT OFF OF ME! GET IT OFF OF ME! STOP HEALING ME! Let me die! PLEASE LET ME DIE! This is my life now. Infinite food for dogs. I always hated you, you bitch! Dragon's Dogma 2 is one of the weirdest and most brutal role-playing games I have ever played. And no, it doesn't have the most difficult bosses I've ever encountered or the most complex mechanics. It's just constantly up my ass. This game should be called Dragon's Dogma 2. It's always fucking something. Because it is always something. It's like this game is trying to simulate what having constant severe panic attacks feel like. I can't go two steps in any direction without getting absolutely ambushed by everybody and their mother. I've developed a sort of motto while playing this game actually, and it is thus. If it breathes, it hates me. So then why, why do I love it so much? Well, because Dragon's Dogma 2 is so refreshingly brutal so expansive, dense, and punishing in a way that I haven't experienced since the first Dark Souls. It feels like every game nowadays is trying to be the next tough-as-nails RPG, but that usually just boils down to combat being kind of difficult. Not since the first Dark Souls have I played an RPG that will actively withhold information from me. An RPG whose world feels genuinely hostile that feels like it genuinely hates me. It is a brutal game in such an alluring, immersive, and addicting way. This game also has some of the most varied, creative, and fun classes I've ever seen in an RPG. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Dragon's Dogma 2 is an open-world action RPG developed by Capcom, and it's more of a reboot to the original game than a direct sequel. So much so that it even follows a lot of the same plot beats as the original, and doesn't even say Dragon's Dogma 2 at the title screen. Similarly to the first game, your character has their heart stolen by a dragon and is reborn as the Arisen. And from there, it's your typical standard RPG affair. You venture from town to town, solving people's issues, getting caught up in political schemes, and doing classic monster hunting type shenanigans. Now, I never played the first Dragon's Dogma, so I was going into this experience fairly blind. The first thing you'll notice when starting this game is just how insanely detailed the character creation is. And character customization has come a long way in the past 20 or so years. Like most RPGs allow you to adjust things like jaw width and chest density, but only Dragon's Dogma 2 will let you adjust the amount of big dick energy your character walks around with. Oh, let's go! Let's go! Yo, my guy is going to be taking every single stride cock first. I'm not very good with character creators, though. So I just made my guy look roughly like Paul Atreides with a beard, and then realized like 40 minutes into playing that I fucked up his name. Oh, what the fu- Paul Atreides? The game lets you pick from one of four classes at the start, and you steadily unlock more as the game progresses. You can also change your class whenever you want by visiting a town which is super cool. But for the sake of keeping this review semi-spoiler free, I'm only gonna be showing gameplay footage from the earlier portions of the game. You also create what's called a pawn, which is an NPC party member whose class and appearance you get to choose. And lore-wise, pawns are these like, subservient race of beings that are created by Arisens across the multiverse. You can go into this like pawn dimension and see pawns created by other players and take up to two of them to join you on your journeys. It's weird because they know they're sort of this like slave race, so it's a little uncomfortable interacting with them, but they're also like your ultimate hype men. Yeah, give me that. Look, I'll be honest, at first, I didn't really like this game. The combat felt weird and slippery, and there was no real sense of feedback to any of my attacks. There's also no lock-on mechanic for any of the melee classes, so it feels like you're fighting the camera about as much as you're fighting the enemies. 
The story felt super generic, the writing wasn't very interesting, the graphics go from looking pretty modern to pretty Xbox 360 the closer you get to character models. It's also full of a ton of weird game design decisions that I'd never seen in a modern RPG. There are no markers for quest givers, like when you run into a new town, there will be no indication on your main map or mini map that anybody wants to talk to you. You either have to just walk around town hoping somebody runs up to you with a quest, or talk to literally every single person and hope they have something interesting to say. Once somebody gives you a quest, you will be given a quest marker to tell you where to go next, but also sometimes you won't. Sometimes people will just run up to you and be like, Greetings, Sir Arisen. Sir Manella would speak with Prey Seeker out at your earliest convenience. Who the fuck is that? There's no quest marker telling me who that is or how to find them. I just have to figure it out. And some NPCs can only be interacted with at certain times of day, so who knows if I'll ever find them. And like I said, once you do get a quest, the game will give you an official quest marker. But a lot of times it'll just be like, hey, here's a quest 4,000 miles away. Go figure out how to get there with no fast travel and also your maximum health gets smaller and smaller unless you rest at a campsite. Danny, what are you talking about? There's fast travel, you just have to buy a lift stone and it'll transport you to a town of your choosing. Fucking who can afford a lift stone in this economy? Everything in this game is outrageously expensive. 10,000 gold for a night at an inn? Just to sleep? To sleep! 2,000 gold for a round at a tavern? A round of what, angel semen? If I'm lucky, an armor piece will cost like 10,000 gold at the low end. And I can rarely ever manage to have more than like 40,000 gold on me at any given moment. It's not that the game doesn't hold your hand, you can always figure out where you need to go and what you need to do. It's that the game holds your hand and then severs it at the wrist. And maybe it was due to all of the blood oozing out of my severed wrist, but as I continued to play it, I found myself falling deeper and deeper in love with this game. All of the complaints I had about this game turned into things I loved about it. I love that you can't just look at your minimap and find where quests are. You have to actually thoroughly explore a town. And sometimes just talking to people isn't even enough. One time I spoke to a random shopkeeper because I needed to stock up on some health items. And I rarely buy health items in RPGs. I usually just end up crafting health items from components I find in the wild. But I bought a potion from this guy. And after I did, a cutscene triggered and his wife was like, Dear, that's the wrong one. Oh, apologies. Thank you, my darling. <sighs> Fine. My vision's growing worse by the day, I fear. And I was just standing there like, motherfucker, are you about to give me a quest? If I hadn't purchased an item from this specific guy in this specific town, I never would have gotten this quest. You can't just explore the towns in this game. You have to experience them, immerse yourself in their culture in order to get the most out of them. And it makes the world feel so much more alive as a result. It makes the game feel so mysterious, so full of secrets. Like there are dozens of potential secret quest lines I'm missing by not interacting with every random villager or exploring every random cave. And that's what makes this game's world so exciting to explore. The world itself is your typical generic fantasy setting, but it's so dense with hostile creatures and cool things to discover. One time I came across a dragon fighting a cyclops next to a castle full of ballistas and catapults that I could use to fight the dragon. One thing always leads to another. There's always some new cave or monster waiting around each corner. Half of you is excited to see what sort of adventures await. The other half is like, oh, oh f fucking of course. One time I jumped on the back of a griffin because I am dumb boy and it just straight up took me to a second boss. And on one hand, I'm like, whoa, that's sick. This is so dynamic and thrilling. Then on the other hand, I'm like, of course. Of course this thing is dragging me a thousand miles away from my quest marker and party right now. But that's what I mean when I say I like the brutality of this game. It's not enough to just hop on the griffin. You don't know where the fuck this guy's going. You gotta make sure your stamina's not gonna deplete while he's still in the air. If he drags you away from your quest marker, you better make sure you have enough supplies to survive the trek back. Check this out. 
I'm caught in the middle of the desert, trying to make it to the next town. I'm out of healing potions, and my max health is criminally low. There is a tavern right there, which I need to get to, otherwise I have to walk my ass all the way back to the previous town, which is like 10 real-time minutes away, because this game doesn't have fast travel unless you have a rift stone, which I couldn't afford at the time. I'm getting my ass absolutely reamed by the united coalition of dogs and goblins, but eventually, I manage to just barely scrape by by the skin of my teeth. I take seven steps forward, and what do I see? The goddamn headquarters of the united coalition of dogs and goblins. But I go, okay, whatever. I don't even care. Get over here! I kill the dogs and goblins. Two more steps? A golem arises. I can't take this thing on. I eventually discover, but the tavern's right there. I just gotta run past this thing, restock on supplies, and I can come back later. But whoops, here comes a griffin! So I run from the griffin. But whoops, can't go this way, there's harpies. So then I run from the harpies. But whoops, can't go this way, there's goblins again. I'm, I'm never, I'm never getting out of this area. I'm never gonna make it out of here. This is where I stay the rest of the game. Come on, boys, we gotta move it! Katharina, I'm sorry, I'll come back for you, I swear! Help us, help us, please, please, we need help! You guys are, you guys are so great. You guys are the best. I, I never thought I was gonna make it out of the desert. So I make it to the tavern, finally. I stock up on supplies, and I decide I want to change my class. I switched to the sorcerer class because they look super cool, and I've never seen one in action before. I don't have any armor that a sorcerer can wear though, and all I can afford is a chest piece, so I'm just, I'm just walking around with a staff and no pants on. I kid you not, 15 seconds go by, and some dude is like, Boy, what's your problem? And I'm like, what do you mean? What did I do? How could I possibly have done something wrong? I'm just walking. This guy's like, I don't like you, but I'll make you a deal. If you can fight three of my men all by yourself, I'll leave you alone. But if not, I'm gonna take all of your money. First off, that's not a deal. Those are just the terms of a mugging. So now this is my life. Fucking please, please, I don't know how to use this class. That has been my experience for the entire duration of this game. But despite all of my bitching, can you see how this is super fun in a sort of masochistic way? It is a blast seeing what new cruelty this game is going to throw at you. The combat became incredibly satisfying once I got the hang of it, and it never got repetitive because each class feels so unique from one another. The rogue feels insanely quick and lethal, and it's immensely fun scaling larger enemies and stabbing at their weak spots. Meanwhile, sorcerer's spells take an incredibly long time to cast, that's because their magic is so over the top and cataclysmically powerful. The game also boasts a couple of really unique classes, like the Trickster, who does crazy shit. He's an illusionist who swings an incense canister around to confuse monsters into attacking each other. But he can also make fake walls and fake bridges that confuse your enemies and just, just overall fucks with their heads. It's like one of the weirdest and most creative classes I've ever seen in an RPG. Or the mystic spearhand who can stab and throw smaller monsters at larger ones. Even the more generic classes like archer and fighter feel great to use and all have a ton of flashy over the top abilities that make them all feel worth playing. Now, the game isn't perfect, and even though I do love a lot of its cruel quirks, there are some that I don't love. The game is all about climbing monsters, targeting their weaknesses, and using different types of elemental magics against them. But there's no bestiary. There's no way of knowing which elements are effective against which monsters, except for the fact that your pawns will randomly shout vague advice to you from time to time. Sometimes they'll be like, We have no need to our enemies. And I'm just like, Bitch, you know this thing's weakness? Tell me it. Tell me it, and next time I will come prepared with that weakness. Speaking of pawns, why can't I control their actions? You can equip pawns with different spells and abilities, but you can't actually tell them when to activate them. This one's not even like a matter of difficulty, I just feel like this would vastly improve the combat in every way. Combat would feel a lot more strategic and satisfying if I could direct my pawn to use specific spells when I want her to, and then coordinate my own attacks with them. 
I think it's a really cool mechanic that fire spells burn monster wings and prevent them from flying. If I'm a rogue, why do I have to just stand there hoping my pawn also thinks that's a cool mechanic? It's impressive how Dragon's Dogma 2 can take what would be flaws in other games and turn them into features. Because the game really does make you feel like you're embarking on a harrowing adventure every time you leave a village. You'd better make sure you're stocked up on supplies before leaving a town because you don't know how long it'll be before you see the next one. Exploring caves off the beaten path is fun, but enemies are tougher at night and your vision is limited. So it can be extremely dangerous to venture too far for too long. Yeah, it sucks that armor pieces are so expensive that switching classes isn't as seamless and easy as the game likes to lie to you about, but it does make saving up for that armor set all the more rewarding, and it makes wearing that armor feel like your armor. It's not perfect, and it's not for everybody. The story only ever becomes mildly interesting at best, you're not going to grow attached to any of its characters, and the setting is far from unique. The combat is fun and varied, but the lack of a lock-on mechanic for melee classes can make it feel a little janky and even unfair at times. But the world is dense and exciting to explore. Towns feel alive because the game forces you to interact with them on a deeper level than most do. This is a game that's meant to be savored. Any interaction with any villager can result in a new, interesting questline. Any wrong turn off the beaten path can result in a massive, grand-scale event, so it's in your best interest to stop and take in your surroundings. It's like genuinely the best adventure simulator I have ever played, and I can't wait to hop back in and see what other adventures await me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider checking out the other videos on my channel as well. Also, let me know in the comments what you think of Dragon's Dogma 2 and what other games you would like to see me talk about in the future. And I will see you guys next time.